Hey guys, welcome back to Clash with Corey. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn on that notification bell. Got a surprise for you today, got a special guest. You see him up on top of the screen. How you doing, Echo? I'm doing great, Corey. Thanks for having me on the channel. Awesome, man. And to, well, this is part two. You might have already seen part one over on Echo's channel where we talk about the mass miners at Town Hall 12 and how it's becoming the new meta right now. Now we're going to take a look at Town Hall 11. We're going to take a look at my favorite Town Hall 11 attack right now. Nerf this. So the attack that we're going to look at right now that is my absolute favorite at Town Hall 11 is going to be a queen charge into a wall wrecker entry with back end hogs. Echo, you familiar with that attack? I am familiar with it. I know that it's one of your favorites, and I'm excited to see how WHF gets it done. All right, man. Let's jump into the first replay. Uh, we're going to pull up number five in three, two, one, play. I'm in. Now, this one's done by Jawalu Graham. Now, that's uh, Hex's alternate account. So this is Hex himself pulling off this attack. And uh, inside the WHF clan, this attack is actually known as the Jawalu, uh, sort of named after, after Hex in that sense right there. Yeah, that's pretty cool that when you're in WHF, you could name attacks whatever you want. It's a perk of the uh, perk of the clan, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't mean they always catch, you know what I mean? But, but <laughs> we know true. what we call them. So, you know, that that's all that really matters to us. As long as you're having fun, man. Definitely. We definitely have a lot of fun. Um, you know, it, this is such an amazing attack. You can really get the queen charge, uh, usually with full health and still an ability, and sometimes still a rage all the way into the core of the base and uh it really makes the hagen really easy on the back end yeah i mean this kill squad is going to take out i think a little bit more than half of the base with the king doing some funneling the wrecker going into the base and destroying the core and the queen following behind it really works out nicely definitely does hey and we're gonna kind of separate away from the attack for a minute uh you mm -hmm. know if you guys haven't had a chance check out echo's channel now's definitely the time to do that um i don't know if you guys are aware but he connects the clash community more than any other youtuber out there man and i just want to say i really appreciate that echo and i appreciate all the support that you've shown me since the very beginning since i very first started with like 300 subscribers or something <laughs> really appreciate it man uh, no problem, man. It's a lot of fun to actually get together with other creators and just put videos together, you know, with one another and uh, to get some fresh eyes and different opinions on attack. So it's it's all fun for me. Definitely. Thank man. you. So we got the hogs coming in here, man. We definitely do, man. Just like we talked about, man, that queen got so much value in that base. She's still alive mm -hmm. in the core, reaching over, taking out an expo right now. There's just not that much left to hog and this queen's going to survive the entire raid. Yeah, she's doing nicely, and that's part of the key. If you're going to invest in a queen walk, you want to try and keep her up for the entire raid, and oftentimes it's going to end up in a three-star when she is alive. Definitely, definitely. But one of the nice things about the queen charge hog attack is even if she does die, a lot of times you can get that healer switch onto the hogs, so the value doesn't stop there. Yeah, and that's happening right now, which is probably good. Even though there's the heal spell, you never get upset when the hogs get a little bit of love from those healers. Definitely, definitely, man. He's going to end this raid with a ton of hogs left up. Yeah, lots zoom. of pigs in the field right here, and they're they're looking good. It's easy cleanup right now. You must feel good about the attack. Definitely, definitely. I'm, I'm sure he most certainly does. Very nicely done by Hex on that one. Mm -hmm. So next example, we're going to take a look at uh, Flexagram. And this one's got a little bit different, a little bit different flavor to it. Same basic attack, um, but we're gonna go ahead and take a look at number thirteen. Are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one, play. All right. So we have the basically the same composition here, right? Yeah. You know, maybe a little s subtle changes, just usually mm -hmm. uh, to account for different amounts of funneling that need to be done. But other than that, definitely the same basic army. I see he sends in some hogs right there really quickly just to take out some defenses. Is that for funneling? Yep, entirely just to set up that side of the funnel. Probably had a, a wizard or something right behind the hogs to take care of that mm -hmm. building while the hogs took out the archer tower and just really get that funnel established nice and early. Something I also noticed is that so far your, your attackers here like to go with the queen warden walk, which I think is so powerful as well, having both of them working together. Yeah, yeah, they definitely do, man. And I got to be honest, I haven't caught up to that yet. I don't, I don't trust the healers to make the right choice in there. So uh, they're definitely a little bit more advanced than I am in that regard. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it all depends. But, I mean, it seems like these the Queen and the Warden tend to meet up with the Hogs towards the tail end of the attack, so the Hogs can get some of that buff as well. Definitely, yep. Uh, now, the nice thing we're going to see coming up really soon, the interesting part about this attack, on the last attack, he used Valks inside the Wall Wrecker, and that's pretty mm -hmm. standard, uh, but you don't necessarily always have to do that. And you're going to see right now, there we go. He's got Max Loons popping out of that Wall Wrecker. Um, yep. You know, and, and they just... They just take out a ton of extra defenses under Rage, really leaving not much work left for your queen. Yeah, that's one of the good things about the loons is they're going to just target those those defenses where the Valkyries will target whatever's in their way. And it uh, seemed to work out well right there for that choice. It did, yeah. You know, I tend to prefer to use the Valkyries. And, and you know, honestly, I think Lex uses the Valkyries almost all the time too. Uh, but once in a while, you're going to see an area where, where Valkyries might not be the best option. So you have more options in that CC depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, and let's be real, man. Sometimes you just want to get fancy and do something different, right? <laughs> you're absolutely <laughs> right, man. Sometimes that definitely comes into play. I'm sure it does. Hogs are being healed nicely. Two heals left in the composition, too. Things are looking pretty good. Yeah, they are, man. The queen's kind of stuck on some walls, but she's still alive and she still has her ability. So if she manages to get through that wall, she could definitely get some more value in taking out mm -hmm. that expo right there. Yeah, you don't want that expo raining down the hogs, but really you have that that multi-target inferno, but the heal spell is there while the uh, hogs are making their way. That'll even heal them through that, that uh, wizard tower as well. Absolutely, man. Uh, you know, multi-target infernos, wizard towers really, really aren't any mm -hmm. threat at all as long as you have a heal to cover that section. Yep, or if you're lucky enough to have a healer following the hogs around. True, yeah, that healer swap on the hogs is always really nice to see. Yep, we saw it in the last two attacks. Uh, I wonder if it's going to happen in the in the final one that we're going to show also. All right. Let's get into that one, man. We got number 10 coming up next. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and are. play it in 3, 2, 1, play. All right. Now we're going to see Vince throw down this attack. Once again, the only real changes you're going to see in composition are usually going to be just to account for different levels of funneling that are needed to get your queen to walk the right direction. Yep, and I'm noticing five healers being used on the walk, even though we have max level queens. Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, you know, especially if you're charging into a base, you're probably going to run mm -hmm. into some seeking air mines. Um, so having that extra healer, sometimes it can save a rage on the way. You know what I mean? On the way in. And if you're not exactly sure where those black bombs are, or if you just don't want to bring Coco Loons to try and clear those seeking air mines, it's nice to have five healers. That way, if you lose one, not the end of the world. You still have a really strong queen charge going. Yeah, I agree. It works out nicely. And I honestly do the same at Town Hall 12. Wrecker's coming in, and the king is going to do some funneling with the wizards behind for support as well. It is, man. Uh, you know, usually the king is used on the other side of the wrecker entry, but I want to say usually you want to drop your king before your wrecker. That way he can tank several of those defenses uh, for mm -hmm. that wrecker at the beginning, and the wrecker can usually get quite a bit deeper into the base because of it. Yeah, well, right now the wrecker is basically in the core, and what are we having drop out of there? It looks like, oh, we got a golem popping out of oh that. Oh my gosh, right he did bring a golem in his wrecker right here. I didn't catch that one earlier. Uh, but he's got he's got some tanking <laughs> happening right now. Yeah, he most certainly does. So that queen's not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, she's barely yeah. even being touched. I mean, really only by the multi-target inferno. So, and she's also got a nice open channel in there. Look how much of the base she has access to from that channel that she's in, including that eagle artillery. And I guarantee you, that's exactly where he wanted to get her on this raid i agree and notice the grand warden's ability was just used to keep the warden alive because the single target inferno landed on him and uh and was taking him gotcha now the hogs are coming in look at the little path that's left for the rest of that base not too shabby at all and if i'm not mistaken the queen should step up and target that barbarian king any minute now um and no of course he's he's gonna follow the hogs <laughs> isn't he <laughs> it looks like he is oh. Uh, but it's you know okay. what? That happens all the time. It definitely does, man. Uh, you know, a lot of times, sometimes you can vary the composition on this a little bit. Three rages, three heals seems to be the standard. But, you know, sometimes it's a good idea to bring two rages and a jump, and you can really jump your queen all the way mm. through to the backside of that base. Yeah, that could work as well. I don't honestly see that very often. Usually I see a lot more heal spells. Um, but, you know, it does stink when the queen is stuck on those walls in the center of the base. Yeah, yeah, it definitely does. So going to get this one taken care of, no problem. Eventually, the king gets tired of chasing the hogs, and his, and uh, Vince's 
queen is going to take him out. So at least the hogs don't have to try to kill him at the end. Yeah, no, right now it looks good. You got a few hogs, you got a few wizards, you got the queen. Space is going to be cleaned up. And Mexagram, again, must be pretty happy with his attack, especially in such a tight war. Definitely. You know, and I don't know if I mentioned it in this recording yet, but, you know, one of the nice things about this attack is it works equally as well against farm bases as it does against CWL bases. And it's really, really well at uh, dealing with, like, ring bases you might face in clan war leagues. Yeah, you never know what you're going to come into in Clan War Leagues either. I've seen the craziest bases, some amazing <laughs> ones, and some just ridiculous looking ones. So you don't really know what you're going to get. You could be fooled. True. Very true. All right, man. Uh, man, uh, thank you for coming on over the channel and, uh, you know, making a couple videos. It's always super fun to hang out with you guys. If you haven't checked out Echo's channel yet, go ahead and check it out because... Um, I got to tell you, he was supporting me right from the get-go, and I've seen him do it to so many other content creators. What a great guy. Uh, go ahead and go over there and check out the part two of this video as well. Thank you guys for, for you know checking out the video. Echo, thank you for hanging out today, brother. It was a pleasure. Anytime I got an invite to WHF with you, man, I will be there. Thanks so much for having me on the channel. Awesome, bud. I hope you guys liked the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Nerf this.